today's video, we're taking a look at different types of knots, how to tie them and when to use them. Welcome back to part two of our rope series. In this series, we are talking about rope, taking a look at different types of rope, knots, how to use it, and then we're also gonna be integrating that into medical and rescue. In our first video, we went over different types of ropes, and the type of rope you should be looking to buy based on what your application is. In this video, we're taking a look at knots. So we're gonna go over some different um, aspects of knots, then we'll go into specific knots, and then we'll talk about the use case for each one of these as well. If you want a quick rundown of the knots that you should know without going through this entire video, skip to the end of the video, and we have some of the basic knots that you should know there. All right, so we're taking a look at knots. We're gonna be talking about knots, but inside that knot family, we also have hitches and bends and some other things as well. So we're gonna be talking about all that today. But before we get into that, we should go over a little bit of terminology. Uh, first off, when we are tying a knot, a couple of features that we want a good knot to have is we want it to be easy to tie. We want it to be fairly easy to untie, especially once we've loaded it. And we want something that is easily identifiable. That way, once we tie it, if we are familiar with tying knots, or if someone else is tying a knot, we can, at a distance, take a look at it and know that it looks right so we know we've tied it correctly. If we use some jumbled up knot that's just a bunch of loops and bends and you can't easily identify it, when you get done, you don't know if it's tied correctly. Or if someone else is tying that knot for you, you can't look across the room and go, yep, he tied the correct knot. So we want to have a knot that's easy to tie, easy to untie, and easily recognizable so that we know it's tied correctly. When I'm tying a knot, the area of the rope that I'm tying a knot, or the end that I'm tying a knot on, is considered the working end. The part that is just hanging out in space, not doing anything right now, is the standing end. So it just makes it a little bit easier if you're explaining something to someone or if you want someone to go further down and tie another knot, you can say go further down toward the standing end or come back toward the working end just so we have a little bit of bearing. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't flip this rope around and now all of a sudden this side becomes the working end. It just means wherever you are is the working side. So it's just terminology to be able to be oriented to that rope. So a knot is a generic term and there are lots of different categories of knots, but really a knot is something that can stand on its own. So I can tie a knot. It doesn't have to be around anything. It's just a series of loops that are made inside of a rope itself um, and it can hold itself. So an overhand or a grapevine knot or a fisherman's, um, something like that would be a knot. A uh, figure eight family of knots is also a knot. But we also have a bend. Now a bend is a form of a knot, but it's when you join two pieces of rope together. So if I have something like a square knot, that is a technically a type of a bend. I can make a sheet bend or a Beckett bend the same way. Um, and there's several different types of bends that join two ropes together. So a knot can stand on its own a bend holds two pieces of rope together. Now a hitch is another category, and a hitch is tied around an object so that if we remove that object, that knot falls apart. For example, a half hitch. A half hitch is simply going to be a rope that is twisted, slid over an object, and is pulled against itself. That's a half hitch. We can also do a clove hitch, which is two loops, and we'll go over how to tie these in a little bit, but two loops. Again, this is tied around the object, but if the object comes out, my knot falls apart, okay? So a hitch is tied around something, but it has to have that something in order to maintain the structure. Otherwise, it comes apart. Now, we're tying knots, and I say make a bite in the rope. A bite is simply when the rope goes one way, comes back, and goes the other way again looks like a loop, but technically a loop is something else we're gonna get to in a minute. So simply take your rope and make a bite. We're gonna be doing this for a lot of knots, especially the figure eight on a bite. Now a loop in a rope is once you make that bite, if you continue this the opposite direction, now I've made a loop. 
So it starts one way, loops all the way around, and continues going the same direction. All right, we have a bite, we have a loop, and now we have a round turn. So if we start that loop and we finish going back the opposite direction again, that's gonna be a round turn. Um, this is not used a whole lot in knots, but a lot of times it's used for friction. If you are lowering something and you need a friction point, you can wrap that around an object to create friction. But those are the three main terms as far as some type of a loop. So you have a bite, a loop, and a round turn. All right, let's go ahead and dive into tying knots. Before we get into the knots, I do want to say that there is an awesome website. I'll leave a link to it down below. But animatedknots.com has amazing resources and they will walk you step by step through all sorts of knots. Now, the only problem I would see with animated knots is they have every knot on there just about. So you can get off in the weeds and find some really fancy knots that will do you absolutely no good. Or a really fancy knot that looks cool, but really it's too complicated for uh, some of the use cases. So most of the ones we're going over today should cover it. But if you want to find a step-by-step -step guide, go check out Animated Knots. They have an app you can put on your phone as well. So it's a great resource to be able to use. All right, let's go over the first knot and that's the overhand knot. So the overhand knot, we're simply gonna take the rope. We are going to make a loop and then we're gonna tuck this through the opposite side of that loop and tie it and it's gonna look like a pretzel. Most of y'all should be pretty familiar with this knot. Um, you pull it apart a little bit and it looks like a pretzel there. You can use this as a stopper knot if you don't want your rope to slide past something um, and you can integrate it with another end of a rope um, and actually tie two pieces of rope together that way. Next up is the figure eight and there's actually a family of figure eight knots we're gonna go through, but let's start with the basic figure eight. So figure eight, I'm gonna start with a bite. I'm gonna take the tail of my rope or the end of my rope and I'm gonna loop it around. Now, if I were to just come back through this side right now, that would be an overhand. Instead, I want to continue to loop around to the backside and come back up and through. When I pull it tight, I'll have something that looks something like an eight. So that is my simple figure eight. Now the figure eight you don't typically tie on its own unless you need it for something like a stopper knot. Um, but most of the time when you're tying something like a figure eight, you're actually tying something like a figure eight on a bite. That's a very common knot and one of the top knots that you should know. It's one of the fastest, safest way to make a loop or a bite inside of a rope. These are great for attachment points for rappelling or anchors or tying off a vehicle that's about to fall off a cliff or anything like that. And they're very fast to make. So figure it out on a bite. I'm gonna start with a bite and this is gonna be the end that I end with. I'm gonna pull now and I'm actually gonna make a bite out of both strands of rope. And so now I'm gonna tie that same figure eight, but I'm gonna be doing it with both strands. So now I'm gonna take this end, loop it around, back to the back and back up through and pull it tight. If you twist it one too many times, you'll end up with a figure nine on a bite. And there's actually been some interesting studies done that said the figure nine is actually not any better than the figure eight. So stick with the figure eight. One thing I wanna mention with the figure eights is we want to make sure our knots are dressed well. And by dressed, I mean, you don't want these twisting. So the two strands should be side by side. And when we tie this by keeping them side by side and not twisted, it's gonna make our knot stronger and it's gonna make it easier to untie after the fact. One other thing to keep in mind is how easy this is gonna be to get undone after the fact. These two strands or this bridge that goes over where the bite comes out is gonna be how you're gonna release this once it's been loaded. This knot will cinch down, especially if you're pulling a truck out of a mud or you're putting multiple people on this for a rappel or a rescue. This knot will cinch down. The easiest way to get this undone is to take this bite, pull it over, and you'll notice that it creates some slack in here in this top piece. So now one by one, push that over and that'll help break that knot. It'll be a lot harder to do once this knot is actually loaded, but using that same method, you can start to work that knot loose and then you can pull this through this way. So the quick method I use to tie a figure eight on a bite, hold this, I grab this end and I loop it all the way around without letting it go and push it through and pull it tight. Make sure it's dressed and not twisted and there you're good to go.
If you're learning something useful from this video and it's actually teaching you something about knots, we'd really appreciate it if you'd leave us a like on the video below. And if you have any questions over some of the stuff we're going over, leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you and have a chance to answer those questions. Hit the subscribe button so you're alerted of any future videos and make sure your notifications are on. All right, next up is a figure eight follow through. By the time we get done, we're gonna have a figure eight on a bite, but it's gonna be tied around an object. If I tie a simple figure eight on a bite, there's not gonna be any way to get that object inside my bite. So I'm gonna to have to tie it around this object. So I'm gonna start with a decent amount of a tail here. I'm gonna start and tie just a simple figure eight. So all the way around, back up and through with a long tail. I'm gonna now wrap this tail around my object and I'm gonna feed it back through the way it came. And I'm just gonna trace all the way around the same way that that rope went through the first time. Trace it around, tuck it through. These two strands should be side by side the entire time. If they get crisscrossed or go through it somewhere else, you've messed up, you need to pull it back out and make sure that they trace all the way through. So by the time I'm done, I should have something that looks like a figure it out on a bite, but now it's around an object. And then I can simply reverse that process to get it untied. So another one in the figure eight family is the figure eight bend. Remember we talked about a bend is when you join two ropes together or two ends of a rope together. So the figure eight bend, we're gonna tie a simple figure eight on this side and we wanna leave several inches of tail hanging out the end. And now we're gonna trace it just like we did with a figure eight follow through, but we're gonna do it with a completely different rope, not the same end of this rope. So I'm gonna take this end, I'm gonna trace it through And you should have a figure eight knot that looks like the figure eight on a bite or figure eight follow through, but we've tied it from opposite directions. So now we have our rope completely joined together or two ends of separate ropes now joined together. We always wanna make sure that we have plenty of tail, several inches of tail hanging out either side. So as this rope tightens and slips a little bit, uh, this tail doesn't come back through. This knot shouldn't slip, but as it tightens, things are gonna adjust and move a little bit. So we wanna make sure that we have plenty of extra slack hanging out here. All right, the next couple in the figure eight family are gonna get a little bit tricky, so pay close attention. We're gonna do a double loop figure eight. So we are going to start this process by tying a figure eight on a bite, but we're gonna have a lot longer of a bite here available. So I have my two strands, I have my bite on one end, I begin tying a figure eight, and when I get to this part, Rather than pulling this entire bite through, I'm only gonna pull it part way through. This bite now folds over the entire knot, goes down here to the base, and I'm gonna pull these two loops up. Now this strand should end up on the top of these three. If you start with it on the bottom, it's actually gonna start crushing your knot and deforming your knot as you start to put tension on it. So you wanna make sure it's up at the top. Pull both of these and it should look like a double strand figure eight, but we have three across the bottom. So three on the bottom and we have two loops now to connect to. This is not a super common knot. You could usually get by with uh, doing just a simple figure eight or a couple figure eights or inline figure eights. Um, but there are some times where you may need two attachment points that are not directly in line and that now allows you two independent attachment points. So that is the double loop figure eight. All right, and this is the trickiest of them all. We are now gonna do an inline figure eight. And what this means is I don't have to have an end of a rope to tie this. I can tie it right here in the middle. But I can't just go to the middle of a long rope and tie a regular figure eight and then be able to load that because both of my strands are coming out of the knot this way. If my knot is being pulled this way, it's actually pulling my knot apart and it's not gonna be very strong because this is not the way that this knot is designed to be loaded. 
So I don't want to throw a figure eight in the middle of a knot, um, at least for something that is life safety or something that really needs to be able to hold weight. If I'm doing this with paracord to be able to hang something up when I'm camping, no issues, it doesn't matter. But if you're using this in a rescue situation or to tie a vehicle off that's about to slide off of an embankment, we don't want to be tying knots in the middle of our rope and be loading them this way. So we wanna tie a knot that is a directional knot that is intended to be in line. All right, so let's tie an inline figure eight. I want my knot to face to my right, your left. So I want it to face that way. So I'm gonna say, this is the front, this is the back. So I'm gonna start my knot, I'm gonna take the back, I'm gonna go back front, back front. From the back, bring it up to the front and make a loop. Now I'm gonna wrap this loop around the back and stick it back through the front. So now I have my inline figure eight. Pause this video, go back and watch it again if you need to see the exact steps for that, um, but the key indicator that this is tied correctly is that it will look somewhat like a figure eight, but most importantly, this bite and this extra piece of the rope all come through the same loop or the bridge of the knot here. So double check and make sure that this rope and the bite are all coming out of the same area. Some people will tie it and this rope ends up somewhere different. That's not safe. Don't load it, retie it, and make sure that it's a proper inline figure eight before you load this. This is a very strong knot. You can have it in line. You can clip to it. You can use it for rescue purposes. You can make a trucker's hitch out of it. There's all sorts of uses for this. So this is a great knot to be able to tie. All right, well, that concludes part one of our knots video. Here we talked about the figure eight family of knots. So in the next video, in part two, we're gonna be going over some more knots and also touching on some hitches such as a trucker's hitch and other bins as well. As always, stay vigilant and stay safe.